I'm going to lead this one off because I am just going to kind of set the context a little bit. I always like to set everybody up as they start. Um, so uh, I just have some graphs to show and, and then we'll get into the real speakers. It's an interesting question. We get calls from reporters in the public all the time and particularly reporters in the media seem to just freak out about aging infrastructure and age and all the time we get asked, geez, we got a pipeline in our community that's 50 years old. I thought they were only designed for that long. When are they going to replace it? Um, so, you know, we've tried to take a look at that and pretty much came to the conclusion that age doesn't matter as much as how well you operate, maintain, and test a pipeline. And I think you'll probably be hearing that from a variety of people this morning. We did look at just, uh, you know, kind of where pipelines fall in their age. And here's an interesting graph I found about the age of infrastructure in New York City. And you can see that compared to other types of utilities, the pipelines in New York City are pretty young. And we've seen that they've had some problems even at this young age. Um, we also, you know, when we started getting these questions about the age of the pipeline, tried to go in and look and figure out what the age of the pipelines are. Um, and this information is available through the PHMSA website, and I think they've even put up a graph very similar to this recently. Um, so this is just looking at the gas transmission pipelines, and it, it shows that, you know, if, if you look at this, the average age of a mile of gas transmission is about 50 years old, and there's kind of a big hit of them that came in Oh, you know, in the 50s and the 60s. Um, the next question is, well, how does that relate to risk? And, you know, we came up with this graph and we showed it, and uh, PHMSA has come up with a similar graph that looks about the same way I think Alan talked about it yesterday, the bathtub uh, uh, graph. And what it shows is, just as we expected, at the far end, the very oldest pipelines are failing at a higher rate than the, the younger, than the pipelines in the middle. The surprise when we looked at this is the brand new pipelines are failing even faster than the very, very old pipelines. So that was kind of the, the wake up call to us that we were trying to figure out. That led us to, when we asked engineers about that, they said, well, of course, that's what you would expect because there's this thing called the bathtub curve and people that reliability specialists, when they think about things, recognize that there's always this bathtub curve in products you know, things wear out as they get old, and we saw that on the first slide, but when they're new, early in life, they fail for a variety of other reasons, and it's kind of based on even age expectancy. There's higher infant mortality, and then everybody is pretty stable, and then you finally die as you get old. It's pretty much the same curve. Um, so, you know, that kind of explains the curve, but then we thought about it, but it doesn't really have to be that way. And if you do look at the data that PHMSA provides, you'll find companies, and this is Alliance Pipeline, who's been around for, I think, 15 years, and they've never had an incident. So they didn't have that failure rate early on like other companies must be having. So it doesn't have to be a bathtub curve, I guess is our takeaway message. Just a couple other graphs. Here's natural gas distribution, age. Uh, you can see it spread out there more than uh, the transmission is. And here's the failure rate there, same bathtub curve, although as they get older, you're seeing kind of more going on in the older age ones than, uh, than it's stable. And, and I think some of that has to do with some of the uh, cast iron and some of those other issues. Uh, here's hazardous liquids, the age. The average age is 40 to 45 years old. They're actually average a little newer than um, the gas transmission because a lot of them have gone in the ground in the last couple of decades. And Here's the failure rate for hazardous liquid, too. Same bathtub curve. A little lesser problem at the old age end. Lots of causes of pipelines. This is all pipelines, hazardous pipelines for the last uh, five years, more or less. Um, when you put them all together, you know, 86.7% of the failures are things that operators claim they have control of. When you break that out and look at the old versus the new, you find out that the oldest ones, those installed before 1950, have a much higher rate of failures from corrosion, which is an age-related problem. So that makes sense. When you look at the brand new ones, you see they don't hardly have any corrosion problems, which, thank God, we, we're not seeing that. But the, the failures really jump up under material weld and equipment failure. And if you parse that down, it's not really material or welds either. It's equipment failures. So brand new pumps put on a station have problems the first few years. Uh, what do the regulations say about aging? The federal regulations for gas pipelines do not mention the word age. 
Um, the regulations for hazardous liquid do take age into consideration for determining prioritization of assessments. So reporters always want to know how long you can operate a pipeline before it's too old and the regulations are really pretty much silent on that. So the big question I'll leave you with is without clear regulatory criteria for replacement, are we facing a growing incident rate as thousands of miles of pipelines built before 1970 get older? And here there's the two graphs again that I showed for whichever these are, these are gas transmission lines, you can see that slug of pipelines that were put in the ground in the 50s and 60s are moving towards the end of the failure curve that you see there on the right where they ought to start failing at higher rates. So I'll pose that question to the next panelists. What are we doing about that as it comes towards us? Thanks. <laughs>